country. Shortly after these grottos were completed, far away in the Hodong area, the Emperor of the Northern Wei Dynasty was building the even grander Yungang grottos, incomparable to any grottos that were already in existence, and finer than any that would follow. In his book, Annotations on the Classic of Water, Li Daoyuan described the scene. Work is cut open the stone mountainside and carved gigantic statues. Rare Buddhist scriptures were brought there. Halls were built on the mountain and by the waterside. Buddhist temples rose here and there in the mist. The Yungan Grottoes were built on the northern side of Wuzhou Hill on the outskirts of Datong in Shanxi province. Around the hill was a broad stretch of land with beautiful scenery. Completing this gigantic project almost exhausted all the resources of the imperial court of the Northern Wei Dynasty. According to historical records, the empire conscripted several tens of thousands of men to work on it, and every day the workers consumed 750,000 kilograms of grain and salt and 250 kilograms of chili peppers. Construction of the Tanyao Grottoes, the most representative of the Yungan Grottoes, continued day and night for more than 30 years. All the statues in these five grottoes are extraordinarily tall and extremely large. The tallest, enshrined in cave number 19, is 17 meters high. The shortest statue in cave number 16 is still an impressive 13.5 meters high. The stately and mysterious bearing of these statues of Buddha was depicted using carving techniques known as large plain areas on a huge statue and straight and even carving lines. These bold and majestic statues carved with gentle and concise lines became the aesthetic models for work undertaking in the early stage of the construction of the Yungang grottoes. The mighty statues of Buddha represented the great ambitions of the emperor whose forefathers were from the nomadic tribe of the Xianbei in North China. Lu Xun, the famous writer of modern China, compared the giant statues to the Great Wall and he further eulogized them as towering buildings in the sandstorm and solid and great art. Shenbei民族在佛教造像上呈现出来的审美风格 Buddhism reached a peak of popularity during the Northern Wei Dynasty around the 5th century. The practice became widespread despite the tremendous cost of erecting Buddhist statues and creating grottoes. Besides the Yungang grottoes, the famous Longmen grottoes in Henan province also date from the period of Northern Wei. Toward the end of the 5th century, a new king ascended the throne of the Northern Wei dynasty. His name was Tuo Ba Hong or Emperor Xiao Wen, and at the time he was just a boy. Under his reign, the regime began to promote reform in order to accelerate economic and cultural development. In the year AD 494, the imperial court moved its capital from Pingchang to Luoyang, and at the new capital began construction of the Longmen Grottoes. The project consumed nearly half of the empire's annual revenue, and it took 30 years to complete. The main part of the grottoes is the three Northern Wei caves, Guyang, Binyang, and Lianhua. Today, we have no idea if the Lungmen Grottoes and the Yungang Grottoes were built by the same workers, but minute changes are discernible in the appearance of the Buddha statues between the two places. The Lungmen Grottoes were the result of the great effort of Emperor Xiao Wen of the Northern Wei Dynasty to assimilate the culture and lifestyle of the majority Han people, and so the Buddha statues at Lungmen bear many traces of Han culture. They were the result of integrating the Buddhist artistic style of India with elements of Chinese art which emphasized likeness and form. 
The carvers of these Buddhist statues must have used much of their energy thinking about the facial expression to be depicted. The facial expression had to be solemn and dignified so that they would generate sincere respect from pilgrims, yet it was not to be chilly and unapproachable. Buddhist statues built after the Northern Wei Dynasty moved its capital to Luoyang take on a little of the air of the secular world. They are dressed in the loose garments of Han scholars, their faces are less solemn, and they smile. In short, they are more like people from real life. The benefits of the fusion of cultures from the northern part of China with that of the south were fully displayed during the Tang Dynasty. The Buddhist statues carved during this period for Fengxian Temple at Lungmen are the best among the Buddhist statues of the Lungmen grottoes. The principal statue is in a sitting posture. Its head is 4 meters high, its ears 1.9 meters long, its hair curved, and its brows high and long. The statue casts its eyes towards somewhere ahead and down while its lips show a faint smile. It has both masculine strength and gentle feminine beauty. This statue has been acclaimed as a perfect combination of human being with divine spirit. One afternoon during the reign of Emperor Chen Lung of the Qing Dynasty, calligrapher Huang Yi came to the Lungmen Grottoes. When he entered Gu Yang Cave to look at the majestic statues, he noticed chiseled on the wall beside one of the statues some Chinese characters. He realized that what he was looking at was a note revealing who had built the statue and when. Such notes can often be found in tiny inconspicuous spots and from them we can imagine how the craftsmen who built the statues must have felt after long days of hard work. They chiseled a few words next to a statue to express their happiness at what had been accomplished. Wang Yi felt amazed by these words as they had been carved using the technique known as straight knifing. Chinese characters carved with this technique have neat strokes with sharp angles and bear clear traces of the chisel, but this was a technique not favored or used by scholars. Characters chiseled out in this way look natural and unsophisticated, revealing a lively intelligence and an inner strength in their seemingly clumsy and wild appearance. Wang Yi requested that rubbings be made of these notes, and he had them brought together in an album under the title 12 Calligraphic Pieces from Long Men. This album, known as the Wei Style Tablet Inscriptions, is known as one of the best calligraphic works in China. The brushwork of Wang Shijiu is exquisite and powerful, but the Wei tablet inscription style injects a gallant and unsophisticated air into Wang Shijiu's style. It provides a new arena for the development of Chinese calligraphy. A new trend, learning from the Wei style tablet inscriptions, began a wave of calligraphic creativity across the country. Wei Bei and Wang Shijiu are the tablet inscriptions. 是中国书法史上的两座高峰，他们之所以同时出现，是因为魏晋时期是一个隔江而治的时代，所以呢，北边是一些少数民族，他们一种大漠，嗯，苍凉，而且是巨石磨牙的方式，写出了一种震撼人心的，尽管是文字不周，文质不雅，嗯，形式也不是那么呃，像文人欣赏的那么秀丽。但是它代表了一种雄强的漠北的那种风尚。The stone carvers of the Northern Wei Dynasty could never have expected that the few characters they chiseled on a wall would one day be regarded as classic works of calligraphy, comparable to those written by sage calligrapher Wang Shijiu. 
the calligraphic style of the Eastern Jin Dynasty and the Wei style tablet inscriptions represent two high peaks in the history of Chinese calligraphy. This was an era of ideological opening up and academic reform, an era in which the majority Han people allied themselves with the ethnic minorities of the North to develop the broad and fertile land of North China. The first major social transformation in Chinese history took place during the Spring and Autumn period and the Warring States period. These periods produce many famous scholars and philosophers and a hundred schools of thought, and laid a solid foundation for the birth of the Qin and Han empires. The second major social transformation took place during the period when China was under the rule of the Wei, Jin, and Southern and Northern dynasties. This period provided a space for new thinking to develop. The Wei Jin calligraphic style represented by Wang Shijiu, the realistic painting style represented by Gu Kaiju, the pastoral poetry represented by Tao Yuanming, and the Buddhist statue sculptures represented by the more Gao grottos all appeared in this period. During this great time, the openness and tolerance of Chinese culture were fully displayed. Art forms such as sculpture, painting and calligraphy entered a new phase of prosperity, completing an historical leap from the time when they were used as simply practical means to communicate to a time when they were used to express people's inner feelings. During this period, the cohesive force of the Chinese nation once more testified to its might. The fusion and collision of the cultures of different ethnic groups laid a solid foundation for the coming of a prosperous age in China under the rule of the Sui and Tang dynasties. During this period, Chinese culture achieved unprecedented levels of openness and tolerance. Art forms such as sculpture, painting and calligraphy achieved a historic advance in that they were no longer used pragmatically as a means of communication. Instead, the artist was able to express his inner feelings. This was also a period when the Chinese nation was once again acting as a cohesive force. The cultures of different ethnic groups, through their fusion, laid a solid foundation for a future golden age in China under the Sui and Tan dynasties. And thank you for staying with us on today's New Frontiers. I'm Qi Xiaoqing from CCTV International. Bye for now.